Hello everyone, did you know that with the Prismatic Warlock class available, that selecting Arcane Needles and Lightning Surge will get you free, fully charged power mini to use? This might not be interesting to those who know already, but using this with certain Warlocks exotic does allow us to explore areas that never was possible, such as free charged mini builds that can generate Devour, Amplified, Poison, Sever, and now Slow and Freeze. The great thing about today's build is that once you have this created, you can easily add other exotic warlock minis to the build and be done with it in seconds, since it doesn't require much improvements. So it does have further ramifications for additional builds down the line if you wish. If this sounds good to you, then keep watching to the end of the video for more. A start with the exotic of the build and aim. Our aim is to maximize narcotic grips poison effect as much as possible over your fragments, mods, and Monte Carlo exotic traits. After that, we will then expand our melee uses to link in more with our weapons and drastically increase our build's potential. Only two exotics are in use for the build, and that is Monte Carlo and Narcotic Grip. Both of these exotics work hand in hand with allowing us to use our powered melee as often as we like, and with this alone, we can spam it as much as we like wherever we go. Monte Carlo Exotic Trait, Monte Carlo Method, states a dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully recharge your melee ability with each kill. The strength of Monte will allow our melee charges to always stay on top, while also getting a damage buff once it reaches a full stack. Although Monte is a good choice to pick here, although Monte is a good choice to pick here, if you're more of a person that prefers to use something like Thorn or Osteostriga with the given exotic, then you can go ahead and add that instead. However, you will then need to accommodate the loss of strength energy by adding mods or perks to cover this area instead. Looking at our secondary exotic, Nicole Grip, its exotic effect, Grasp of the Devourer, states a damaging a target would merely poison them, dealing increased damage over time. Defeating a poison target is supposed to condition. Using this with Lightning Surge and Arcane Needle will allow the build to proc its poison effect on a more wider scale, while the Jolt effect is also active. At the same time, since the two effects can jump from one enemy to another, it can act as a perfect gatekeeping method for locking down a multitude of enemies if you do get surrounded. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. A Feed Avoid, where getting any ability kills grants Devourer. Devourer improves self-healing and also grants grenade energy. Lightning Surge, where while sliding, activate your charge melee ability to blink forward and cool down an arc lightning strike. Facet of Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapon grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super also grant bonus energy to you and your team. A Facet of Protection, where while surrounded, you are more resistant to incoming attacks. Facet of Ruin, which increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a status crystal or frozen target and also increases the solar ignition radius you have. Facet of Balance will rapidly defeat and light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeat dark targets grants grenade energy. And Facet of Coverage, where your arc, solar and void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuffs. Now copying the loadout I created quite recently using Felwinder's Helm will serve you quite well considering how closely identical the two exotics are. The only thing I've truly changed is the adding of Bastille Grace and Courage Fragments to the mix. A Grace will be useful for how often we'll be using our connected weapon overall in the build. On top of that, having a faster way to access our prismatic abilities on the spot means that we can use our melee attacks even more faster and more commonly while not even using Monte Carlo. In many ways, if you lean heavily into the prismatic side of things, you can get rid of Monte Carlo for a more different connect weapon instead and then rely on your prismatic form to get fast at the melee energy all the way through. And coverage will of course make my light subclass attacks do more damage when being propped. Having cold snap grenades with the build will allow us to use the build how we designed it to be, while also making it strong enough to take down a major enemy in one hit. Although, don't expect this to be a major game changer when used against a ultra or buff. So the theme overall fits the build the way I would imagine it to be. And I don't see additional changes being required any further from here onwards. Of course, once you do go ahead and add it to your own system and give it a try from there, you then can make the effective changes from there. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with strength also playing a part as well. 
The strength, however, will get most of its benefits via Monte Carlo's effect, unless you choose a different pathway, of course. Resilience, we have R at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour on hand will keep us alive, and Faster Protection is also going to be useful. Discipline, we have R at tier 10 for a 1 minute, 1 second cooldown via Cold Snap Grenades. The following grenade will be helpful for enhancing our ability buff at the same time, which will be useful for power melee hits to connect better. As we do have Devour on hand, the only thing you need to have for the build would probably be Impact Induction for a 12% buff and Distribution for a 4% buff. You really don't need a lot for your grenades and melee options, as having the following is actually enough and thus will allow further experimentation for mods of your choosing. Additional mods, which are highly recommended, we do have the following. Having the Heavy Handed, Hands On, and Powerful Attraction mod will allow us a quick way of creating and collecting orbs of power. Then having Heavy Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger ammo mods are also highly recommended for the weapons we are using. And I also recommend they are following the elemental type for the weapons you are using as well as this will play a big part as you carry on playing with the build. As we have covered our main primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick a sewer weapon for the build. These are all optional, including the main exotic I have spoken about. Having Mindbender's ambition with 1-2 punch is going to be a great pairing for generally any mini build you have. This can be activated via Lightning Surge effect, and the following allows me to quickly deal with Majors, Ultras and Champions as efficiently as possible. And truthfully, any shotgun is finely used as you may want something that fires a bit more faster. But at the same time, I'd always advise, as recommendation, you have a secondary weapon that has the 1-2 punch perk. That is the key thing that build must have. Having Cold Comfort with Chill Clip and Envy's Assassin is the next most recommended choice to have as it will link back into your fragments being used. Remember, with Faster of Ruin and Courage on hand, we can maximise our damage output by quite a bit via our abilities alone. Of course, if you're fine with how your abilities are, then the heavy can be swapped to something more personal instead, depending on where and when. But this is a great and easy to use prismatic build that does it all for a new player to access. Being able to spam your lightning surge and knock out a grip into a group of enemies isn't anything new, as this was achievable way before prismatic became a thing. However, although possible via arc subclass, you won't get the free charges available there and then, nor would you get devour, stasis slow and freeze, Unravel and Jolt Effect all in one. In fact, this sort of build is more of a fever dream than anything. And yet, here we are with a build that is great for eliminating large groups of enemies in one go, one after another. In general, content with no difficulty apply, it does fairly well against enemies and bosses who could be easily mowed down by heavy or primary. Once you start to hit legend above content, that's where the build starts to slightly fall off just a bit, but only because of the risks that now get introduced. For example, as long as we have Devour and Faster Protection on, we can go in headfirst against most enemy groups that have swords above their heads and the main title. This however isn't always going to be possible, even with the given benefits always available, if the enemy type level is much higher than our own general light level. In fact, using this in GMs would actually be a no-go for how badly you might get torn up. Yet, this is still a build I can see myself using in GMs only because I enjoy using it there and then, but also it would really depend on how you execute it. Even if the enemies are higher tiers than me, if I use the build to enter and exit as fast as possible, we can still leave a damaging trademark in the area we just entered and thus find a good way to use it in a much more higher difficulty. Outside of the poison damage buildup and great method of spreading itself far and wide, it's a great starter build for those who want to give a damaging prismatic build a try before flying off to new grounds. So yeah, give this build a try folks, I'm sure you like this one. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content or more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. Dim link is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you check out my other playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.